Well, all right then. I think we might be ready to start. Hello! Welcome to an adventure! I hope that you are having a great week, um, <clears throat> a great September, or I should say a great September. Um, hi, how is everybody? Also, I was, I thought I was going to be like on time on time and then I don't know, the camera's doing weird things today, so I'm just futzing with it, because, um, yeah, I did not get a sunburn. <laughs> this is, this was not bad. Uh, a few minutes ago, <clears throat> when I was in studio mode and looking before I brought my face onto the, onto the screen, I was purple. Like, my face was purple. It was that bad. Um, I had to turn off the auto white balance. I don't know why the auto white balance decided that I should be purple. <laughs> so, I'm just doing the manual adjustment <laughs> to see. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to an adventure. Uh, if you're new here, I am Anthony Wright de Hernandez, Community Collections Archivist at Virginia Tech. Um, I am known on the Twitterverse as Rogan27. And this is a once a week show that I do on two channels, two um, <clears throat> twitch.tv slash VTUL Studios, which is the University Libraries channel as well as my own channel, twitch.tv slash rogan27. Um, and we look at materials from the archives. And I'm, um, sorry, I just keep watching all the emotes. And... Thank you all very, very much. Let me see what all has happened. Because, wow, um, a lot has happened. <laughs> um, Stephen Joyce, it is great to see you. Thank you so much for the resubscription for 38 months. Uh, Lord Portico, hello, hello. Um, uh, Obi, I saw you redeem the all right. I didn't hear it, so I redeemed it again. Um, it looks like Matt also redeemed it. You know, let's just... Yeah, I didn't hear that one either. That could just be that I have my sound really low. Uh, but it could also just be the way I have it set up is not happy. Um, <clears throat> be Right UK, thank you so much for the 45 month resubscription. How are there that many months? that I have been doing this. It's an archival stream, but that's no reason to delay celebrating. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Be Right UK. Aw. Uh, level three hype train. Um, yes, face. Uh, and yeah, the, the ship would like you all to participate in chat, which you're doing. One of you will have a, a temporary digital diamond. Because uh, the bot will choose you as a VIP for the for the stream. Lord Portico, thank you for a 45-month resubscription. I love the dancing gummy bear. Um, Obi, thank you for the 210 pride bits. Gosh, this is amazing. And then um, <clears throat> Be Right UK gifting five tier one subs. Um, so and Simplex Pachinko. Uh, THL Katrina, Matt M33, Astra Alexian, and uh, Shadow Adam. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Rogue Ship One and um, enjoy 
being a subscriber and having emotes. And if you're new here, welcome. It's great to see you. Um, that's awesome. And then uh, 100 bits from NeoGets and um, 500 bits from Be Right UK looking in the pink. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we're streamers. Time is wibbly wobbly. This is true. <laughs> Consilience. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for the uh, 41 month resubscription. <laughs> because it's the best color. Purple is the best color. I just didn't understand why auto. Uh, the auto white balance decided that my face should be that color. I mean, my shirt is that color. My ring is that color. My face. Um, <laughs> Hannah, hello, and thank you for the hundred biddies. Um, gosh, we have started level four of a hype train. Don't go there now unless you want the stream in surround sound. Oh. Uh, don't go to the VTL, VTUL studios at the same time as you're at the Rogan 27. Yeah, otherwise you get double. And I'm uncertain. I think there might still be a slight audio delay happening on that one. And I'm trying to work out a solution to that. But I've been really busy. So I haven't quite gotten there yet. And Neo gets thank you for the 10 bits. Um, I see you said train poke. Uh, uh, sadly, um, in order for Twitch to count it towards the train, it is 100 bits minimum. Uh, just as an FYI. I do appreciate the 10. Uh, just in order for Twitch to count the bits towards the train, it has to be at least 100. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I didn't hear the redeem either. I'm going to throw it out there again. I heard it that time. I don't know why I didn't hear it before. Anyway, uh, I, I need to fix that. So that's the only alert that I have that's using Twitch's alert system. And it does not consistently play the sound when it plays the video. Uh, so I think I'm going to have to implement some other method. Uh, Be Right UK, thank you for the 123 bits. Uh, THL Katrina, hello, hello, hello. Um, this is amazing. And uh, you didn't hear it? I heard it. Now I am frustration. Why have people not been hearing it? Could you see it? And um, Joseph Brooks, thank you for the follow. Why for not? Well, we're gonna solve this. <laughs> not every day you open Twitch and see Torgerson and Bridge just sitting there. <laughs> um, yeah, every Wednesday. Uh, Torgerson Bridge is behind me via green screen. But, um, well, let me just check this alert setup then because it's supposed to have sound. That's sort of half the point. Um, let me see here. It should be. Uh huh. And should be in here. I'm guessing I set it up improperly in um, OBS. You know, it, it's a streamer, uh, a, a streamer issue, not a um. All right, I'm gonna test it one more time, and then we're actually gonna, you know, talk about archives. But you meant no shame. I'm well, not sure that's what all right, No then. Shame was for. Oh, gosh. Be Right UK decided to test it. I didn't hear it. But now I have more direct ways to try and figure out why. It's set for... Oh, well, that could be part of it. No, but... That 
shouldn't be, because that's like... Mm. You heard it? That's funny because I didn't. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play it one more time and but um Well that's alright then. Well I'm glad you can hear it. It's set to play both on stream and in the monitor, and apparently it has decided that it does not wish to do so. But as long as you can hear it. <laughs> I will mess with that um, <clears throat> another time. Uh, I I did bump the volume a little bit, uh, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, hi everybody, and um, oh, did you know Paul Torkelson well, donated all right, money then. to the <laughs> to the university under the stipulation that they not name a building after him. I did not know that, actually. <laughs> yeah, they didn't apparently listen because the bridge is connected to Torgerson Hall. And both the bridge and the hall are, are named after him. You'll probably see this bridge um, on the national football broadcast in... A couple of weeks. I don't remember. It's sometime in October coming up uh, where they will be, uh, there will be a nationally televised uh, football game <laughs> from campus. Uh, I'm trying to look at a calendar. I'm doing it, of course, the most complicated way possible. But um, when they come and broadcast from campus for like the like uh, the TV like the when they come into a national broadcast for like a prime time football game here, uh, I believe it's October seventeenth is when it's going to happen. Um, they tend to set up right outside the library under that bridge <laughs> for their broadcast because. Um, it makes for a good backdrop <laughs> for the shot, uh, but they actually stand outside and do it. I, I just have it be a green screen. Spent a day in the Dales. Oh, I love the flat cap. Uh, okay, let's see. Technically, they didn't name a building after him because they named two buildings after him. <laughs> What do engineers love more than being technically correct? This is this is true. Um, okay, we are here at Virginia Tech. I am sitting on the first floor of Newman Library, uh, hidden away in my office, which is inside Special Collections and University Archives. Um, congratulations, Stephen Joyce. You've been randomly selected as VIP for the stream. And you get a, a lovely little digital diamondy shaped icon next to your name for the stream. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so since we're going to be looking at historical materials that are held by Virginia Tech, um, we like to just take a quick look at the history of the institution. This uh, being the land acknowledgement and labor recognition um, put out by the Office for Inclusion and Diversity here at Virginia Tech. <clears throat> Ooh, I am Puddle Glum. Hello! <laughs> a technicality. I love it, V-Right UK. Uh, somebody make a note that V-Right UK needs points next time we have access to the point spot. Um, I'm still working on that. Uh, <clears throat> Virginia Tech acknowledges that we live and work on the Tutelo and Monacan people's homeland, and we recognize their continued relationships with their lands and waterways. We further acknowledge that the Morrill Land Grant College Act of 1862 enabled the Commonwealth of Virginia to finance and found Virginia Tech through the forced removal of Native nations from their lands in California and other areas in the West. Virginia Tech acknowledges that its Blacksburg campus sits partly on land that was previously the site 
of the Smithfield and Solitude Plantations, owned by members of the Preston family. Between the 1770s and the 1860s, the Prestons and other, lo other local white families that owned parcels of what became Virginia Tech also owned hundreds of enslaved people. Enslaved Black people generated resources that financed Virginia Tech's predecessor institution, the Preston and Olin Institute, and they also worked on the construction of its building. There is a longer version that uh, if you are interested, uh, you can find by visiting the Office for Inclusion and Diversity's website. <clears throat> but today, we are going to be heading back to 1920 for some nutritional pseudoscience. <laughs> We've been there once before, um, but we are revisiting the Hauser Institute of New York City collection. Um, it, it's a fascinating set of materials. Um, so the, uh, we'll, we'll look here at the abstract on the finding aid. Uh, finding aid is in that link if anybody wants uh, <clears throat> to pull it up yourself. Um, this collection contains booklets and broadsides related to the Hauser Institute of New York City, conducted by food scientist Gaylord Hauser. Born in 1895, died in 1984. They contain pseudoscientific instructions related to health and nutrition. <laughs> yes, nutritional pseudoscience. Basically, it's a bunch of books about fad diets from the 1920s. <laughs> so, um, it, it's an interesting collection. Um, <clears throat> Gaylord Hauser uh, was born as Helmut Eugene Benjamin Gellert Hauser in Tübingen, Germany. Tübingen? Tübingen? I'm not sure which one. Um, but uh, Helmut Eugene Benjamin Gellert Hauser in Tübingen, uh, Germany in 1895. He immigrated to the United States to join his brother, Reverend Otto Hauser. As a young man, he developed tuberculosis of the hip and underwent several medical procedures, but Hauser felt that he owed his progress to a doctor who recommended natural remedies. He traveled to Vienna, Zurich, Dresden, and Copenhagen to learn about food science, and upon his return in 1923, opened an office in Chicago and began teaching about curative powers of food. He wrote over a dozen books on health and nutrition and promoted his restorative diets through talks and radio shows. While he gained a following among some celebrities in the early to mid 20th century, he drew criticism from the medical community who considered his teachings to be quackery. Hauser died in North, North Hollywood, California in 1984. So essentially he published a bunch of um, nutritional guides that were essentially fad diets um, that gained attention because uh, some celebrities endorsed them. And I, I say they're pseudoscience because he does have in it the beginnings of what later becomes actual nutritional science. Like the hints of it are there. He clearly understands some of what will develop into full nutritional science. Um, <clears throat> and so there's, it sounds, potentially like it could have some accuracy, but please do not take medical or dietary advice from this stream. Um, these are historical documents that at the time the medical uh, establishment considered to be quackery. Um, alongside his pseudoscientific uh, nutritional stuff, yeah, it's more of an appetizer to true food science. Um, alongside him putting out his nutritional stuff, actual like 
snake oil snake oil salesmen uh patent medicines and such were rampant like there were everybody had a panacea cure-all uh that they were selling and, and claiming would just make you the healthiest person ever um it would cure everything from a broken leg to a amputated head but um <clears throat> He didn't quite fit into the realm of patent medicine snake oil salesman, but he also didn't really fit into nutritional science. He kind of straddles the fence between the two. So <clears throat> uh, you're free to explore more in the finding aid if you want um it looks like uh when miranda processed it she linked out to some uh maybe like a uh that might be his obituary or something like that or an article i don't know and then there's a list of um what's actually in the box so if you see something on the container list and you're like hey that sounds interesting let's look at that uh let me know um we we have previously looked at this collection um i'm trying to remember i think we only got through like the first two folders so i might not spend a ton of time on them because i'm pretty sure we did last year but um So this is this is box one folder one chemic analysis of types of and temperaments with key to food fairly certain we looked at this one because it sounds familiar but we'll glance at it chemic analysis no flurry you gotta love the um the illustration here that is very much trying to get you to believe in the science of what you're going to read in this booklet. Uh, and there we go, the Hauser Institute Incorporated, Empire Trust Building, New York City. This book cost five dollars. Um, copyright 1929. Oh yes, I I know we looked at this last time, but I think it's worth just reading this intro once more. To my students in America, teaching people what to eat and how to eat for the last four years has been a tremendous task. Hang on, I'm adjusting the light. <laughs> I should do one thing at a time and not try to adjust the light while reading. <clears throat> teaching people to eat and, or teaching people what to eat and how to eat for the last four years has been a tremendous task. However, looking over the thousands of letters from grateful students who have learned how to help themselves is more than gratifying and a sure proof that it has been worthwhile. When I created my chemical man, it was my object to convey to my students the fact that each and every human being is a chemical laboratory, a chemical man. This course on chemic analysis was arranged so that all those who wish to make a study of this fascinating new science will know just what chemicals go into the human body. The first authorities and originators of the science of chemical types and temperaments, Dr. V. G. and Emily H. Rosine have done a great work for humanity when they gave this added key to the world. It is hoped that soon chemic analysis will be taught everywhere, as it gives man the key to the most important thing in this life, the key to his body temple. Benjamin Gaylord Hauser. Um, <clears throat> so it's an it's a interesting introduction because it sounds perfectly reasonable. <laughs> and 
it sounds like what you kind of would expect from somebody who was actually doing uh, food science or nutritional science uh, because yes of course our bodies are chemical laboratories and breaking down the the chemical components of food that's how food science is done but then if you actually look at the content of the book that's how it strays <clears throat> For review, because we read a lot of this last time. The 11 chemicals which create the 11 types. So they're defining 11 types of um, people. And there are 11 chemicals that define those types. So <clears throat> <laughs> Let's see. Before going into the chemical analysis of the 11 types of people, it is necessary that the student know something of the action and reaction of these chemicals. You will see just what to expect of the types that have any one of the 11 chemicals in the lead. You will see that the calcium type is a slow, enduring, steady type because the chemical calcium, of which they have a great abundance, makes them so. And you will be able to under or see for yourself what these 11 chemicals are and do and you will be able to understand chemic analysis so i'm i want to just review this because this is like the basis for his work as far as i can tell um the, these 11 types and the so calcium is one of them potassium is another one. I'm not going to read through this because we did a lot of that last time. Phosphorus, sodium, chlorine, not chlorine, chlorine. And I did not know this one uh, last time we looked at this collection. Um, silicon, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon. You know, I, I personally think that we're all carbon people. But um, <clears throat> apparently I'm wrong. I was expecting this to be based on organic chemistry, but it's clearly inorganic. As when we read this today, <laughs> it seems ionic. Um, <clears throat> hydrogen, sulfur. Can you imagine if you were a sulfurous person? Um, <laughs> uh, and then you get body types and head shapes that indicate a positive or negative nature. Ooh, phrenology head shapes to indicate a positive or negative nature, disposition and talent. Uh, gosh, I forgot. I forgot all of this. I will definitely put in, uh, in the VOD, I'll include a link to the previous episode where we really spent a lot of time with this volume in particular. Um, if anybody sees something and, and says, and really wants me to delve into it let me know but otherwise i'm just sort of flipping through this as a reminder so that i can get on to the other things um face shapes of the five temperaments so the oblong bone with the sort of square jaw long face calcium and silicon types Oval muscular, potassium, and chlorine. Or they say chlorine here. I don't know. I don't understand. But anyway, took 15 minutes before we got into phrenology. <laughs> I, I think not even 15. Wide triangular, ligamentous, and sodium type. Where is this ligamentous coming from? What is that? Yikes. <laughs> um, circular vital. Carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen. Um, pyroform mental, the phosphorus and sulfur types. Of course, you know, uh, phosphorus and sulfur being attached to the descriptor pyroform makes total sense um, <clears throat> because those elements definitely are associated with 
like fire. Um, but what is this ligamentous thing? Oh gosh, we could. I, I mean, I get ligaments. Sure, great, but. I don't understand. All of the others are calcium, silicon, potassium, chlorine, ligamentous sodium. But there's no other sodium. Pyroform types also tend to be pretty good starter Pokemon. <laughs> um, for context on this, <clears throat> at the top of page 10 here, it says the vital temperament utilizes the vital chemical elements known as carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen. Therefore, these chemical types are vital in temperament, viz. carbon type, nitrogen type, hydrogen type, oxygen type. All the vital, temp all the vital types of people have circular faces or square circular faces. <clears throat> the students should study the faces above five temperaments. Uh, or of the above five temperaments. It is the biggest help in chemicanalyzing chem chemicanalyzing people. When you see a circular face, you know it belongs to the vital temperament and is either a carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, or oxygen type. What sort of modernist nonsense is this five temperaments? All good traditional scientists should know that there are only four temperaments. I know, we haven't even talked about melancholics. Just want to turn these portraits into VTuber rigs. <laughs> Which one are you? Yeah, well, but so that was the five vital types. But there are 11 types. Um... I believe there's a whole nother set of faces. I'm trying to remember. Oh, the chlorin type. Not often seen in America. Unassociative. Chlorin as a chemical element has a strong affinity for water and dries up the fluids of the body. For it has no affinity for the organic elements. Therefore, we must expect this type to be painfully emaciated. Well, I mean, this is true. There are not lots of painfully emaciated people in America. Uh, <laughs> at least not today. Oh, gosh. 1920s. It didn't take long to get to a reference to a Chinese laundromat. Um, historical terms. <laughs> there are five types, but actually there are 11 for reasons. Definitely scientist. Well, there are 11 chemicals. So there are five vital types. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the, after the vital types, there's, oh, no, it's, it's historical terms all spelled out i should do i should add like a shortcut i've got enough space i could make ht also call the same command uh okay i don't know there's the vital temperament ones it's five temperaments and 11 types that's the difference caffeine type please <laughs> You also just listened to a maintenance phase podcast episode on the Myers-Briggs personality tests. Ooh, we haven't talked about that, but I have in our collection, we have some like personality typing things. I actually have the, the two um, Kinsey publications in the collection. They could be interesting to look at sometime. <laughs> uh, 
It might be mods only. I don't know. I don't know that it needs to be mods only. I wonder if 13 is a baker's dozen. If, if 13 is a baker's dozen, 11 is a shirker's dozen? 12 was historically a key number in many systems. Uh, I mean, yeah, because so base 12, I'm, I'm going to do this. <clears throat> One of the, and I don't know how much you can see it. It bugs me that there's such a delineation, like the green screening could be better, but whatever. I, I think the historical terms command is, is a mods only command. And I don't know why. Um, <clears throat> the reason why 12 ends up being uh, 12 and base 12 uh, end up being fairly common is because if you take your hand and you count using your thumb, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Because each finger has three segments and you're using your thumb as the counter and you've got four fingers, which is twelve. So you can count to twelve on one hand. And so where base ten is because typical humans have ten fingers. So base 10 makes sense for that, but base 12 makes sense because uh, of that, the counting system where you're taking each finger segment as one of the things that you're counting. Um, <clears throat> and so, whoops. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a sort of natural, like obvious basis for base 12. Um, and we do function in base 12 any maths that you do for calculating time, um, it's base 12 or base 24, but base 24 divided in half is base 12 again. So, because um, we do 12 hours in a day or tw 12 hours in a half a day. <laughs> so many factors in 12, yeah. Dozenal. I didn't know that word, but that's a good word. 360 if you were Babylonian, but the 360 is sig significant in your number system when 12 would be at least tangentially significant. To keep track of how many 12s? Wow, base 60, amazing. <laughs> Generally set them up that way to be safe. Yeah, I think we can trust chat with the historical terms one. Base 144 is possible if you use segments on both sides. <laughs> uh, base gross. Gross base? <laughs> that boggles my mind a little bit, but also I think I could grasp it with enough thought. Um, so they've got the 11 types, which were the 11 chemicals. 360 was cut down from uh, 60 squared equals 3,600 in its original form. We haven't delved a lot into maths, um, mostly because it's not one of our collecting areas, but that doesn't mean we don't have anything. Um, I'm just not even sure I'd be able to read it. <laughs> but we could do maths sometime. <laughs> I only know some of this because my history of math classes in undergrad spent like a whole semester on Ptolemaic astronomy. Interesting stuff, but not terribly practical. <laughs> hey, it doesn't have to be practical. If it sparks curiosity and makes you think, it doesn't need to be practical at all. Um, so they have... He claims there are combination types. The 11 types are the easiest to analyze as they have only one predominating chemical. The following are combination types. However, if you will study the 11 basic types, you will be able to chemical uh, analyze most of the people you meet in everyday life. The pathetic chemical type 
Which type is a combination of phosphorus and one or more of the vital elements, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen? Miss Lillian Gish is of that type. See, now I, now, I don't think I did this last time, but I don't know why I wouldn't have. Um, I, we need to look at a picture of Lillian Gish. Oh my goodness! We have been raided by the Noir Enigma! Noir, hello, hello, welcome in everybody! Um, how was your stream? Uh, if you're new here, I am uh, Rogan27. I am also Anthony Wright Day Hernandez, Community Collections Archivist at Virginia Tech. And uh, this is my once a week show where we look at archival materials together and learn from them. Um, it's fun. It's interesting. Today we're looking at some pseudoscience, uh, nutritional pseudoscience from the 1920s. Um, basically fad diets that were endorsed by celebrities from the 1920s. <laughs> So we're having some fun. Uh, we've also been talking about base 12 maths and um, Babylonian counting systems and Ptolemaic astronomy and, you know, everything is fair game. <laughs> so welcome in. Um, it is good to see you, uh, Noir. I wish you luck in the job hunt. I saw your post. Um, I am. Uh, I wish you luck. The ICL mainframe had 6-bit characters and 24-bit words. It could be. And, and oh yes, if anybody here isn't following the Noir Enigma, um, please go follow. Uh, what was I doing? Oh, I was trying to find a picture of Lillian Gish. Because it's relevant. Does anybody know who Lillian Gish was. Apparently, according to um, Gaylord Hauser's chemical analysis of, um, of people and their bodily types, she's a prime example of the pathetic chemical type, combining phosphorus with uh, with one of the vital elements, carbon, hydrogen, or nitrogen. Um, indeed, an actress. So here we are. Lillian Diana Gish, born in 1893, died in 1993, American actress. Um, she was called the first lady of American cinema. So here we have a picture of her. Could you tell that she should be phosphorus and some vital chemical like carbon, hydrogen, or nitrogen? I'm not sure I could. <laughs> but then again, I'm not an expert in this pseudoscience. Uh, let's see, she was silent era film star, was in Birth of a Nation, Intolerance, both Broken Blossoms, La Boheme. So. Uh, guess this is why I don't have a doctorate. I'd never guess that. <laughs> exactly. Um, the isogenic chemical type being a combination of calcium and carbon. Lloyd George, Thomas Edison, and Jane Addams are of this type. Uh, I'm not going to pull up any of them because I think Thomas Edison is uh, famous enough that most people have seen a picture before. See, nerve motive chemical type, a combination of phosphorus, calcium, and sulfur. As we find it in Gloria Swanson, the talented movie star. Um, I will pull up Gloria Swanson. Because I don't know what she looks like. Whereas like Thomas Edison, I know what he looks like. If anybody does need me to pull up a picture of Thomas Edison, let me know and I can. But here's Gloria Swanson. Again, silent films, 1920s. Um, most, she, she was nominated three times for the Academy Award for Best Actress, most famously for her 1950 turn in Billy Wilder's Sunset Boulevard, which also earned her a Golden Globe. <clears throat> 
Um, so yes, apparently she's a prime example of the nerve motive chemical type, uh, combining phosphorus, calcium, and sulfur. There are a lot more. I'm not going to go through all of them because we did uh, last time. But I thought it was good to revisit. Uh, before diving further into these materials. Um, there's also this. Um, practical food chemistry. Copyright 1925. This simplified course of food chemistry is given so that you can eat the specific foods which are especially good for your type. However, one of the surest ways of obtaining all the chemicals is to eat all varieties of food. See, you know, covering themselves. We only recommended that you eat your specific type, but we said that it's best to eat all types. Mm. The iron in cabbage is different than that in blackberries. All forms of iron foods are good, and so it is with all the other group of food chemicals. Be sure to change your menus frequently. Do not stick to a monotonous way of eating. The first step for all types of people to get the best out of their specific food chemicals is to cleanse and purify the body. Yes, this is indeed where that concept starts. <clears throat> Do not fail to follow the seven day eliminative feeding system, which we are going to look at. For those who don't recognize the name, David Lloyd George was a British politician and prime minister. But I need to go on a food cleanse. Yep. And here we are in 1925, talking about food cleanse. Um, by making your body natural, cleansing it, its innate intelligence will take from the foods the chemicals that are necessary for its own type. Iodine, iron, manganese, magnesium, and fluorine. These chemicals are found in smaller amounts and do not make a specific type. However, these chemicals are needed by all types of people. Especially is this true of iodine and iron foods. And so then they provide you with food to supplement. Like, oh, if you need, if, if they tell you you need more iodine in your diet, well, then you should look to be eating lobster and pineapple and strawberries and mushrooms. If you need more iron, well, you've got Logan berries and spinach and onions and strawberries again and black currants. And... But boy, if you need more fluorine in your diet, apparently seafoods, Roquefort cheese, steel cut oats, Swiss cheese, goat cheese, cod liver oil, watercress, beets, garlic, cabbage, and spinach will help you there. I don't personally know very many people who need more fluorine in their diet. And then they go through magnesium, calcium, potassium, phosphorus, sodium, chlorine, because everybody needs more chlorine in their diet, silicon, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen, and sulfur foods. Again, um, <clears throat> don't take dietary or medical advice from this stream. <laughs> and then we get some example photographs. We get Abraham Lincoln, who's a calcium type, Ernest Torrance, a calcium type, Henry Ford, a calcium type. Um, Calcium. They love to do difficult things in the most simple and modest ways. Their direct efforts usually re result in success. Then we get the potassiums. Charles Farrell, William Haynes, and David Rollins. These handsome, well-built actors belong to this type. <laughs> You're an Argon type. <laughs> I'm just going to claim to be a uranium type. Uh, <laughs> sadly, not enriched. <clears throat> if anybody wants to enrich me, um, I do have a coffee. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, if we get the phosphorus type here, Marceline Day, Charlotte Greenwood, and John Gilbert. Oh, wait. Sorry. Uh, Marceline Day is the phosphorus type. Charlotte Greenwood and John Gilbert are silicon types. Um, Marceline Day has the pear-shaped face, large, wistful eyes, and broad brow and temples with the slender body of the phosphorus type. Lillian Gish is also a phosphorus woman. Charlotte Greenwood is a typical silicon type. Note the long, slender fingers, narrow face, long neck, and body with the expression of her eyes. John Gilbert, the movie actor, looks and acts like one of this chemical group. Uh, the sodium type? Lois Moran, Billy Sunday, and Douglas Fairbanks. Charlotte Greenwood is silicon, but she's seen here with Al Jolson, a sodium, and then Sally Phipps, sodium. Uh, I think we did delve more into this last time, so I'm just going to speed a little bit forward. Um, we get some carbon types here. Sulfur types. See, you're supposed to look at their face shapes and take that as reference. So I guess not technically phrenology because it's face shape and not skull shape, but similar. Um, oxygen type, hydrogen type. Herbert Hoover is a hydrogen, apparently. Um... Dr. Annie Bassant is apparently calcium, carbon, and phosphorus. Dante Gabriel Rossetti is nitrogen. Uh, Galli Kirsi is sodium. Is Galli Kirsi? Kirsi? I'm not sure. Um, interesting that Rossetti, we only have an illustration of him. We don't have a photograph. So how are we supposed to know that that's actually his face shape? Um, then, of course, Charles Lindbergh, who's a calcium phosphorus. Uh, George Bernard Shaw, calcium phosphorus. Interestingly, just referred to as Bernard Shaw. Um, and then, pointing you to the rest of Dr. Hauser's private lessons, available in printed form. The eliminative food, uh, the eliminative feeding system which we might have looked at that one last time. We'll look at it next. And if it is what I think it is, then we did look at it before. So we won't spend, we'll just spend a couple of minutes looking at it. Um, but the newest step in food science, as simple as ABC, once each year, every man, woman, and child should cleanse and purify the entire body by eating an abundance of nature's best cleansing, purifying, and eliminating foods. Seven days of this clever scientific combination of the highest life-giving foods will purify the body. Pains and aches disappear because you are feeding in health and starving out disease. Thousands have freed themselves from all sorts of diseases by going on this natural seven-day feeding regime. We clean our houses every year. Why not house clean the body and prevent sickness? Price complete three dollars, and um, <clears throat> you know that you'll be subscribing to his podcast. If you've not previously heard of a seven-day cleanse, which is a still popular sort of bad diet trend, this is where it came from. <laughs> I'm not 100% certain. I'm going to double check. At least he was giving you a seven-day cleanse, but um, I'm going to look up and just see if I can find anything claiming that it started before this.
Wow. I'm, I so far have not... Uh, the, the top results for Origin of the Seven Day Cleanse... Did not get any historical sources. It got me current uh, guidebooks on how to do a seven-day cleanse. Um, wow. Okay, I'm gonna just see if it if there is a wiki article because I, I would be curious if anybody can find. So this is 1925. If anybody can find a source earlier than this for um, the Seven Day Cleanse, uh, I would be curious. All right, there is no specific on that. Let's see. Aha! I just have to use different um, terminology. Detoxification, alternative medicine. If you carry out a seven day cleanse incorrectly, is it likely to weaken you? Same rubbish, different decade. Science and medicine are, and nutrition is hard. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Um, detoxification, often shortened to detox and sometimes called body cleansing is a type of alternative medicine treatment which aims to rid the body of unspecified toxins, substances that proponents claim accumulate in the body over time and have undesirable short-term or long-term effects on individual health. It is not to be confused with detoxification carried out by the liver and kidneys, which filter the blood and remove harmful substances to be processed and eliminated from the body. Uh, activities often or commonly associated with detoxification include dieting, fasting, consuming exclusively or avoiding specific foods such as fats, carbohydrates, fruits, vegetables, juices, herbs, colon cleansing, che chelation therapy, certain kinds of IV therapy, and the removal of dental fi uh, fillings containing amalgam. Um, all right, I want to see... Can I find anything about when it first suspicions of the inefficacy of purging became widespread by the 1830s according to this uh, and they're citing western medicine and illustrated history from 2015 by the 1830s, the increasingly widespread view that many well-established remedies, such as bleeding and purging, were actually useless or worse, made it easier to poke fun at old-fashioned doctrine. Um, so it seems like detoxification, um, the eliminative fooding diet thing, um, had definitely been around for like at least 100 years before this was published. And for at least a hundred years before this was published, people knew that it likely didn't work and potentially was worse for you than not doing it. Um, so he's just as bad as modern day uh, people encouraging you to go on detox diets. Uh, the Master Body Building System shows you what to eat and how to eat to rebuild the body. We have the technology. Um, <clears throat> once and forever, you will learn the important principle of combining food. Learn how to build bones, muscles, nerves, glands with nature's best building foods. This course contains a complete course in simple practical food chemistry. You should know what foods contain iodine, the beautifying chemical, sodium, the dissolving chemical, why adults should not drink milk, and many other vital questions are explained 
so you can understand it. $3. The New Health Cookery. Cookery, um, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, is an older term for cooking. Um, and so, like, if you're wanting to find, like, cookbooks and stuff like that in a library, sometimes you'll want to look under the word cookery. Um, uh, let's see. The New Health Cookery. The only one of its kind in America. All recipes have been tested and are chemically correct. All harmful ingredients, such as denatured flowers, sugar, vinegar, animal fats, pork, white salt, pepper, and pasteurized milk, have been eliminated. And in their place are only living, nutritious foods. The future health of your family is dependent upon what you put into their bodies. This is the best investment in health you can possibly make. We took out all the good stuff. So all you have now is... The stuff we say is nutritious. But... You're definitely not going to like the taste. Already going after pasteurized milk. Yep. And this one I definitely want to look at today. Reduce and rejuvenate. Dedicated to the thousands who really wish to reduce. In it, you will learn about the famous pound-a-day reducing system. Eat all you want, but only foods that help to slenderize. Price complete, $3. Any one single course, $3, or the complete course, all four, for $10. I just, I love this collection. It is so fascinating. Um, but now I'm really curious to delve into the background of the diet, like the, the detox purge diet. I'm really curious to know where did that start? Does that go like all the way back to Rome? Like ancient Roman times or what? Um, it says on Wikipedia, the citation was saying that people were suspicious about whether it was effective as early as 1830, which implies that it was definitely around for some time before that. And then it, uh, the actual quotation links it with bleeding, so bleeding and purging, um, and like bloodletting as a form of medical treatment does definitely go back to like ancient Roman time, if not before. So... That's why I think maybe if I looked, maybe purge diets are that old. If you're losing a pound a day, no snark. That legit sounds like a conversation you need to be having with your doctor. Um, indeed, indeed, I would agree. Um, so this is the eliminative food, uh, the eliminate, the eliminative feeding system originated and taught by Benjamin Gaylord Hauser. And, you know, their lovely logo of a white guy in a lab coat holding a test tube. Um, yeah, we looked at this one. We were fascinated by this. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because, uh, You'll want to follow the link and see. We looked at this last year when we when we visited this collection for the first time. Now you can rejuvenate in your own kitchen. Um, basically, we focused a lot on that contraption. Cleansing the bloodstream. Treat disease by cleansing the bloodstream. Feed in health. Starve out disease. Health is natural. Disease is unnatural. 
Uh huh. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm skipping a lot of this because we did it before, and because I only have two hours, I want to get to new stuff. Mm -hmm. Which food to eat to eliminate which chemicals from your body? Sadly, it doesn't talk about the ones that you probably actually do need to eliminate from your body, like, hey, what should I eat if I want to get mercury out of my body? I'm not sure if there's anything specifically that would filter mercury out of your body. Now you can distill liquor in your own kitchen, whispers. What do you mean I can't say that? What's prohibition? Oh, all right, fine. Normal voice. Now you can rejuvenate in your own kitchen. <laughs> um, we do have some... Uh, we, we've actually looked at some prohibition stuff, but we definitely probably have some specific... Well, I, I know we have some things. I just don't know specifically what. And, like... The moonshine still is way too big for me to ever get on 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 stream. Um, it's not even physically on site. I have pictures with the moonshine still, uh, but I think we probably also have. I don't know if we have any like speakeasy era stuff from the. Um, We've been actively collecting history of the American cocktail, so we might. I haven't looked recently to see what new stuff has come in. We might have. Um, some more like speakeasy prohibition stuff. I've been running across mob related collections lately. I just randomly came across a mob-related uh, cocktail menu uh, last night when I was teaching class. Um, it was completely random because I let the students choose the keyword I was using to demonstrate how to use our system to find things. And we found a cocktail menu that um, was from a hotel bar and the guy's name that was attached to it had been murdered by the mob. Uh, <laughs> so. Oh, you like the continental vibe of the spelling on this title? Facial rejuvenation through one minute gymnastics as taught by Benjamin Gaylord Hauser. I think we might have glanced at this one before, too. Um, but I don't remember. So we'll find out. I definitely, I need to make sure that the next one I pull is reduce. Oh, yes. I don't, I don't think we did this one before, but this was um, the initial image. When I was originally supposed to do this stream, it was scheduled for September. And so this was one that um, that Sterling had prepped for me. Um, and then when I had to reschedule it, I re-prepped with like the new number and grabbed a new graphic because I didn't want to just throw the exact same graphic out. Um, <clears throat> this was the graphic. It was this, this illustration of a face is uh, what Sterling had originally selected uh, as the graphic for the cover of this episode. Um, one minute facial gymnastics. Beauty is but the spirit breaking through the flesh, says the artist. And the wise physician will tell you that beauty is but the external expression of health and vitality. That beauty is much more than skin deep. You will readily understand after you have studied this course in facial gymnastics. Much of the attractive advertising is trying to convince us that by taking care of the skin with the 
uh, 57 varieties of creams and lotions, facial beauty can be obtained. I'm really curious now. I The 57 varieties has to be a reference to the Heinz company. But why? Because they didn't make facial creams and lotions. But they definitely were using the, the like the, the association of 57 and 57 varieties and, and like with Heinz was well established by this time. It depends on your view of condiment. <laughs> they made soup. Um, so Heinz 57 is a steak sauce, but before that, I want to know the 57 varieties. There were never 57 varieties of Heinz ketchup. Um, hey, Smithsonian, stop with the pop-ups. Um, the 57 doesn't actually refer to anything. Um, when I did the exhibit, and I think I did... I know I did a stream on the electric vehicles from the early 1900s. And one of them was Heinz electric delivery vehicle, and it was the 57 varieties was under a pickle. So um, in some alternate universe, the 57 varieties slogan of condiment company Heinz refers to 57 varieties of ketchup, or maybe horseradish, which was the source of the company's first fame. In this one, though, it doesn't refer to anything. The slogan dates back to 1892. According to the Senator John Heinz History Center, a Smithsonian affiliate, um, this is, uh, I'm reading from Smithsonian Magazine. Um, I'll drop the link in case you want to see the rest of the article. Um, at this point, Henry J. Heinz's company had a long history of selling food products, beginning with bottled horseradish. The company, in partnership with a pickle and vinegar maker, started also selling pickles, and by the 1890s was selling more than 60 products, including mincemeat and pepper sauce, Mickelson writes. Let's see. The Heinz Company's products were examples of a new kind of American food. <laughs> in the late 19th century, the emergence of processed food altered the daily consumption habits of millions of U.S. households. Bottled horseradish, canned coffee, packaged meat, boxed cereal, and other mass-produced foodstuffs began to appear on urban grocery store shelves in the decades after the Civil War. Retailers faced a problem of credibility. Neither consumers or tradespeople had previously encountered packaged foods that they could not see, smell, or touch. So they were suspicious of the quality and value of products. So Heinz worked on building a reputation. Huh. But yeah, the 57 Varieties was a well-established marketing slogan for the Heinz company by the time this book was put out. So the 57 Varieties of creams and lotions is definitely a reference to the Heinz marketing slogan, if not to the Heinz products themselves. Have you seen what we do with cucumbers and avocados? This is true. I suspect that it was a, a reference to the marketing of creams and lotions and, and the well-known advertising of 57 varieties from Heinz uh, is being used as a um, lingua franca for just advertising in general. It's just, wow. 
because 57 varieties in quotes there. I don't think it's specifically referring to heights. I think it's just trying to convey the idea of advertising. Uh, <clears throat> One very prominent beauty specialist boldly advertises that the care of the skin is the only way to facial beauty. Nothing could be more erroneous, as you will see, when you study the intricate network of muscles that lie directly under the skin. Real beauty of face and form can only be obtained by beginning within. So, if you want to get real beauty, first begin by removing your skin. Again, don't take medical advice from this channel. Uh, in the above drawing, <laughs> you see what a fine network of delicate muscles lie along the different layers of skin. It is these muscles that must be toned and pepped up. These two ring-like muscles around the eyes and the one ring muscle around the mouth need our special attention. When these two prominent frontal neck muscles become soft, the result is lines and wrinkles. I wonder how far this is gonna go. I, I enjoy looking at um, historical advertising And this idea of needing to like exercise the mouth muscles in order to promote beauty. Can anyone guess uh, what product was used or what product used this idea to try and sell more of its of of, of itself? Like what what um What was the product that was trying to be sold by using reference to needing to work out those specific muscles? Health or internal cleanliness is the foundation to real beauty. A clean bloodstream flowing through every part of the body will also nourish and strengthen our facial muscles and at the same time carry away the impurities that cause uh, the discoloration and flabbiness of the facial contour. In order to purify your bloodstream, you should follow the seven-day eliminative feeding system. Go back and look at our other course. Um, it cleanses the entire body in a way nothing else has yet been able to do. This inner cleanliness cannot help reflecting that inner beauty. The next necessary step is to strengthen the facial muscles. In these illustrations, you can see for yourself just how the facial muscles are arranged. If you will con conscientiously apply this one-minute facial gymnastic, you, yourself, can actually lift and strengthen the facial contour. Has it ever occurred to you that most every other part of the body, especially the arms and legs, is free from lines and wrinkles and is much younger looking than the face? Surely there must be a reason for this, and when you analyze the condition, you will find that we use all of the muscles of the arms and legs, and therefore these muscles do not get a chance to shrink and atrophy. Another reason for so many old faces is the beauty parlor habit. The more facials you have, the older your face will look. The constant messaging and rubbing, or the constant massaging and rubbing is bound to break down these delicate fibers of the facial muscles, especially the, those under the eyes and around the mouth. Beauty operators who give massage by pulling and digging into the delicate facial muscles are ruining thousands of otherwise beautiful facial contours. In order to strengthen these weakened and tired facial muscles, you yourself will have to learn how to use and exercise all of these facial muscles. The old saying, it takes 66 muscles for a frown and six muscles for a smile is still true. If people would only 
laugh more. The corners of the mouth would never go down. Since most people frown most of the time, they use only the downward pulling muscles, which really make the corners of the mouth go down. One of the most important gymnastics you will have to do is to strengthen these two most vital muscles that help to keep the corners of the mouth up. Fortunately, these are easy to strengthen. On the second page, you will see a front view of the facial muscles. And the first things you will notice are the three ring muscles, two around the eyes, and one around the mouth. These three ring muscles are the most neglected in all types of faces. Many people never use them or don't know how to use them. And as a result, these muscular rings become soft and flabby. Then old age attacks them there first. The circulation usually becomes poor, and in these three places, many impurities are dumped. As a result, we see faces with discolorations and dark lines around the eyes and mouth. In order to correct this condition, most of the work will have to be done on these two telltale places, the eyes and around the mouth. Puddleglum, he did indeed tell you to smile more. Pepping up tired facial muscles. Has anybody guessed what product? Uh, this idea that you needed to exercise your mouth muscles uh, was used to sell. <clears throat> Study the chart on page two. Facial beauty and symmetry depend upon the strength and tonus of these muscles. For example, when the muscle extending from the chin to the lower part of the neck, clavicles become soft and flabby. The double chin is the inevitable result. When these two muscular rings around the eyes atrophy, you always find lines under the eyes. The muscular ring around the mouth must be strengthened if you do not wish that old age line extending from the corner of the mouth down the chin or down to the chin. Pretty sure I saw that as seen on TV ad sometime in the 90s. Um, nope, it, it wouldn't have been an uh, as seen on TV ad. Um, it was relying on this idea to help sell its product. So it would advertise that it would uh tone your the tone the the triangle the important triangle or uh, it, chin to mouth um it is not chewing gum puddle gum that's a good guess though our facial gymnastic will prevent and correct this muscular weakness. However, you can help to establish this muscular tonicity by patting and molding along the course of these muscles. The first thing to remember in facial molding is to start in gently, not bruising any of the delicate fibers, especially those under the eyes. Oh yeah, I'm gonna tell you to push, push, push on the parts right around your eyes, Nobody's going to hurt themselves that way. You can use your hands for this purpose. After applying your lemon and oil com combination, oh good. First put lemon and oil on your fingers, then touch the muscles around your eyes. <laughs> the best idea is sticking Q-tips in your ears. <laughs> I'm sorry. After applying your lemon and oil combination, start to pat under the chin with an upward stroke and follow the jawline up to the ear. Most of the toning will have to be done along this line. So starting here, follow the jawline up to the ear. Do not use too much force. There are several paddles. There are several patters or paddles on the market uh which are sorry sorry we'll get to that page in a second uh which are very good for this purpose you should use a triangular one made of rubber 
it can also be used for popping up the more delicate muscles or pepping up the more delicate muscles around the eyes or for testing your reflexes by tapping on your knee. Um, <clears throat> it's not quite the same, but <laughs> checking your knee reflexes. Cortico, why are you in my brain? Um, the illustrations of how horrible your face can look if you don't follow this gymnastics course. <clears throat> Hurt. Suspicious. Suppressed. Bitter. Mad. Um, as well as anger. Skeptical. Ugly. And grouchy. Frown and the world laughs at you. It takes six muscles to make a smile and 66 to make a frown. An old but true saying. If people could see how funny they look when they frown and lose their temper, they would stop right there and then. Right then and there. Uh, notice how all negative emotions as fear, hate, and worry draw the facial muscles downward. In the accompanying drawing, you again will notice how the corners of the mouth are drooping. Because they're such detailed drawings. Um, <clears throat> whatever life brings us, never let the corners of your mouth go down. It always shows defeat. This is some toxic positivity shit. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Many times, dentistry is to blame for disfigured mouths. Okay, now we're going in on dentists. However, the new dentist knows how to correct that by not letting the contour of your face settle after the extraction of the teeth. The new dentist supplies a temporary denture right after the extraction. Be sure and do gymnastic number five if the corners of your mouth are inclined to droop. The next time you are tempted to lose your temper, take a few breaths and things will blow over. Laugh and the world laughs with you. Funny, jolly, happy-go-lucky, huge joke. Happy, good-natured, jocund, contented. Um, uh, we'll do this and then we'll look at, uh, a quick look at the exercises themselves and then we'll, um, be, looking at, uh, reducing because it was the title image and I'm really curious about it. <clears throat> Nothing is better all around facial gymnastic than a good hearty laugh. So many people have forgotten the fine art of laughing. As you will notice on the above drawings, smiling and laughing always cause an upward pull of all the facial muscles. This naturally exercises and strengthens them. Notice especially how the corners of the mouth go up when smiling and when laughing heartily. Even the muscular rings around the eyes are strengthened. If you should forget all the other facial gymnastics and uh, you would learn to laugh as heartily as the man who is laughing at a huge joke, you will raise all of your facial muscles. Not only will a positive, happy attitude keep your face young, but your whole body will be benefited. We cannot deny the fact that easygoing, good-natured types usually look younger. And this, no doubt, is due to the fact that they laugh at troubles. <clears throat> okay. Nobody has guessed, after we look at the exercises, if nobody guesses what product um, this whole idea uh, was used to sell, I will tell you what it was, or what, what it is, was, was. <clears throat> Toning the nerves and blood vessels of the neck. Such a lovely illustration. Not horrifying at all. 
Um, <clears throat> in all cases of sallow complexions and dull eyes, you find that the circulation of those important blood vessels that run along the course of the vertebra of the neck do not function freely. Therefore, the first step the student will have to take is to stretch and relax the neck. This is best done by doing the slow neck rotation as shown in the above illustration. Make a large, complete circle with your head. This is done by sitting and relaxing every other part of the body. Then let the weight of your head turn it slowly, counting up to about 40 for one complete rotation. The old fashioned quick turning of the head does not open the blood and nerve passages. So be sure to do this slowly, making three or four simple, uh, three or four complete rotations. And honestly, this part about, like, stretching your neck was pretty well accepted for a long time. Um, I don't think modern guidance would be to fully rotate your neck in a complete circle, um, because that has the potential to cause um, some... Uh, some damage that you could avoid and still get the stretching without. Um, but for a long time, like rotating your neck in a in a circle was was part of warming up your neck before doing like physical exercise. So some of the stuff in here that's not whip your hair back and forth. No. <laughs> uh, so facial gymnastic number one. This will tone and strengthen these, those large neck and lower facial muscles. You should do your facial gymnastic before a mirror. Sit straight, head erect. <clears throat> now lift head as high up as possible, then pull head as far back as you can. See the above illustration. Do not use too much force at first, but gradually increase the pull backward. Do this at least 14 times once a day for keeping the contour of your face firm and strong. And do it twice a day if your facial muscles are weak and you already have developed a double chin. Um, you might want to make sure that you're in a room by yourself with the door locked because, wow, you're, this, is, this is 1920s. Think of all the cozy mysteries. <laughs> the 1920s woman sits down to do her facial gymnastics, leans her head way back, and is suddenly strangled from behind. <clears throat> Cozy mystery. <laughs> facial gymnastic number two and three. We now must strengthen those mus muscles that keep the lines along the jaw firm and harmonious. This is one of the important youth lines of the face. It extends from the back of the ear down along the jawline. When these muscles are weak and drooped, it detracts greatly from your appearance. You don't want to look like Elmer Fudd. <clears throat> frequently using roll or frequently causing rolls and double jaw lines, which are so unnecessary. Again, look in your mirror and see what this gymnastic does when done correctly. Head erect, turn it sideways to the left, and while it is in this position, pull the head back and up. When done correctly, you will feel the pull all along the jawline and down to the lower part of the neck. Do this 14 times to the left and 14 times to the right. You can go from one side to the other as in our illustration above. Honestly, I think this would stretch more the neck than the jawline, but... I wonder how these specific stretches um, would compare to modern kinesiology techniques? I don't know. Facial gymnastic number four and five. This is probably more difficult for the student, but is the one gymnastic that corrects a multitude of facial defects. Apparently, you know, this will help you correct what's wrong with your face. <clears throat> it raises the corners of the mouth, helps to raise prolapsed cheeks, and even tones those ring muscles around the eyes. First, draw your mouth as far up as possible to the right side. 
and then reverse and draw your mouth as far as possible to the left side. You will have more difficulty with one side than with the other. However, the other side which does not seem to respond is your weaker side and you must strengthen it if you do not want your facial contour to become inharmonious. Do not forget to pull the mouth as far as possible to the side and upward toward the ear. Okay, for this next one, you need to take your skin off again. Um, <laughs> the above is a side view of the important muscles of the head and neck. Isn't significant facial asymmetry a sign of a stroke? Significant facial asymmetry is. But uh, if you look at the people who are generally considered to be the most attractive um, and you really actually look at their faces, their faces are not symmetrical. In fact, it would be extremely rare for somebody to have a perfectly symmetrical face. Most people's faces are not symmetrical. Extreme or significant facial asymmetry can be a sign of a stroke, but um, facial asymmetry is normal. Uh, the above is a side view of the important muscles of the head and neck. And in fact, yes, this is not for actual medical advice. <laughs> um, those two sets of muscles running from the inner and outer corner of the eye uh, down to the mouth are especially important. Oh, let's see. That's uh, from here down alongside the nose and from here over to the corner of the mouth. I don't know. It's, it's these and that that um, he's referring to. Uh, are especially important in lifting and strengthening the drooped corners of the mouth. Facial gymnastic number four and five will take care of that. Also observe the big muscles extending from behind the ear down along the neck it must be strengthened and toned if you wish to correct and prevent a double chin. Nature's own beauty pack. No matter how expensive the so-called beauty creams and lotions are, nothing can ever equal this lemon and oil beauty pack. Naturel. Take some good brand of olive oil and apply it all over face and neck. Then squeeze a few drops of fresh lemon into one palm of your hand. And with the other hand, gently pat the lemon juice all over face and neck. When it mixes with the oil, or sorry, when it mixes with the oil. If the lemon should be too strong at first and cause a burning sensation, use a little less lemon and more oil until you can stand them about half and half. Do not get any of this mixture into your eyes, as it is bound to irritate. Six of these beauty packs, naturel, when used in connection with your one-minute facial gymnastic, uh, will do more for your face than all of the so-called beauty preparations in the drugstores. Lemons contain one of the finest penetrating chemicals to be found. It is cleansing, dissolves impurities, and whitens the skin. Olive oil, because of its healing and soothing qualities, has been used by famous beauties since time immemorial. There is no finer combination than lemon and oil in equal proportions. Be sure that you always use fresh lemon juice if you want to get best results. At night, before retiring, you should apply this beauty pack before doing your gymnastics. It softens the external tissues and you will receive splendid results. If you have any dark spots, liver spots, or other discolorations on your face or hands, rub in a bit of this lemon and oil combination and watch them disappear. Should your skin become dry after using the oil and lemon, apply your favorite cream. Almond cream is especially beneficial to the skin. That's the end of this one, of this booklet. Um, interestingly, uh, 
they're not selling a product. This nature's own beauty pack. They're just telling you use some olive oil and lemon or olive oil and lemon juice um, as a skin treatment. Um, and so they're they're not marketing an olive oil and skin and and lemon juice pre-mixed product. They're not selling a product with that. And what's funny is this is the most so this booklet of everything we've looked at is the most uh it comes across as the most reliable or like scientifically sound i have not specifically researched so i don't know um the accuracy of any of these things but the the neck stretches and facial stretches and things like that align with the types of body stretching that are still taught today aside from the rolling your neck in a full circle which was common practice for a long time but i believe is now not recommended um but i don't think any of like the facial stretches will necessarily do what they're saying they will do but i also don't think they would be harmful um again don't take medical advice from this stream or from the 1920s. Um, <clears throat> but the facial stretch idea doesn't seem too outlandish. And then the olive oil as a skin treatment, I've definitely come across that before. Um, mixing it with lemon oil, or sorry, with, with lemon juice, uh, I don't know that I've specifically come across that, but the citric acid in lemon juice, uh, I know is like a uh, like a home remedy for lightening hair, like to to like sun bleach hair. Um, if you spritz your hair with lemon juice and walk outside in the sun, your hair will gradually lighten. It doesn't have a drastic effect, but so there there are claims in here of using this sort of skin treatment with the oil to offset the irritation of the lemon juice. Um, but the oil and lemon juice combined, uh, reducing skin discolorations. There's at least a possibility that it would actually work. Um, and so it, it's just interesting to me that what comes across as their as probably the most credible information that we have seen delivered is also not them selling a product. <laughs> like, this seems to be a, one of the more scientifically sound things that they've claimed. And they're just telling you to go buy products from your local store. They're not actually trying to sell you anything extra with that. So that just struck me as interesting, an interesting observation. That was the least reprehensible of the ones we've looked at so far. <laughs> I want to be sayery. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, we are, <laughs> we're really close to the, the stated end time. And we need to look at this thing. Reduce and rejuvenate the new way. The pound a day reducing system. <laughs> um, at the same time, because there is no way that I will get to very much more. And I think we've covered enough of the collection that I probably won't revisit it on stream again. Um, I just want to show you the cover of this one. Overweight, it's cause and treatment. Metropolitan Life Insurance Company. This is not, it's in the collection, but it's not um, published by uh, Gaylord Hauser. But yes, we have a booklet. Overweight, it's cause and treatment. 
<laughs> um, and then we have some broadsides that are undated. And so we'll just glance at them real quick. And then we'll look at reduce and rejuvenate. Um, <clears throat> creative silence. The body is every man's Bible. It gives him the keys of earth and heaven to unlock the treasures of this world and all the worlds to come. It is his own word of God, wherein he may read the will of his creator and the history of the universe. To learn the true interpretation of this divine message is more important to him than anything else. It is the vital business of his existence, for only as he is able to understand aright his own body will he understand the universe of which it is the miniature. Compliments of Benjamin Gaylord Housen. Okay, but... The art here is signed. Gay Wood Ring. We know who Gaylord Hauser is. I have no idea who this Gay Wood Ring is. <clears throat> Maybe it's describing how the bells would ring. <laughs> interesting freehand font. Um, it's very, very 1920s. Um, let's see. Inner organ gymnastics. Okay, we're not going to do this one because we just did a whole thing on facial gymnastics and this one has illustrations of the intestines. And and we've got another thing to look at. Ooh. Second series by popular demand. Three free lectures by the eminent young Viennese food scientist Benjamin Gaylord Hauser, originator of Harmonized Food Selection. Monday, February 10th, 8.15 p.m. Food Facts and Food Fancies. Tuesday, February 11th, 8.15 p.m. Human Analysis. Wednesday, February 12th, 2.30 p.m. only. Special lecture for children and mothers. Child Analysis and Child Feeding. Witherspoon Hall. I have no idea where Witherspoon Hall was, so I don't know where this talk happened. Um, since he was promoted by and endorsed by um, celebrities of stage and screen. It could have been in California or New York or you know, anywhere. Oh dear. Seriously? The key to your entire being lies in your own hand. Does anybody know what to expect from this? Because I don't. Your thumb or first finger is the God finger. Sorry. You're... And represents the brain and nervous system. The energy flowing through the thumb is the radiant energy of the first and most sensitive tissue mass, the human radio or the brain and nervous system. This energy is transparent. The nose, the organ in direct connection with the brain, is the sense organ of this tissue mass. The crest on your thumbnail is an indication of your brain capacity. Wow. Wow, the claims here. <clears throat> your ring finger is the Christ finger and represents the bone structure. The energy flowing through this finger comes from the bone and cartilages. The color of this energy is white. The ear is the sense organ of this, the number two tissue mass. Christ always spoke the word. And sound being a number two vibration enters through the ears. 
the crest of the nail on this finger is an index to the bone structure and the cartilages. The energy throwing, flowing through the index finger is the energy of the number three tissue mass, the glands of internal secretion. These glands are the spiritualizers and harmonizers of the body. Number three stands for spirit. The eye are the sense organs of this tissue mass as the glandular function decreases the eyes as the glandular function decreases the eyesight becomes poor the color of this energy is blue the crest on this fingernail is an indication of your glandular strength the fourth or middle finger is the largest finger and represents physical creation the energy flowing through this finger is that of the largest tissue mass the muscles. The color of this energy is yellow. The tongue is the sense organ of this tissue mass. The fifth or small finger. Um, okay, stop bouncing. Camera. The fifth or small finger, the last finger on your hand, stands for limit, a fence or boundary. The energy of the skin, the boundary of your body, both internal, the mucous membrane and external flows through this finger. The color of this energy is red. The nerves of touch are the sense organs of this tissue mass. The crest of this fingernail is an index to your skin action. Large crests on your nails indicate good heart action. Christ, the master healer, used a specific finger for healing specific organs. In healing the blind man, he mixed sputum with clay and applied it to the eyes with his number three finger. Clay contains a great deal of aluminium, which is a number three chemical. The number three energy applied to the eyes, a number three organ with the number three finger, healed the blind man. We all possess this healing energy. But before we can heal others, we must be clean, mentally and spiritually, as well as physically. By using this energy, it is possible to stop pain by applying the fingertips over the affected area. To see how much of this life-giving energy you have, sit in a very dark room and put your fingertips together so that they barely touch one another. Close your eyes tightly for a few minutes and then open them and separate the fingertips about one inch. You will see the energies, a different color for each finger, emanating from the fingertips. Where in the world are they getting Christ used a specific finger? That's not mentioned in the Bible. Hannah, I have no idea. <laughs> I do not know if this specifically was published by Gaylord Hauser uh, because it's just a loose page that was in with the, uh, the broadsides, but wow. <laughs> oh boy. This is like, um, this is like reading doctrinal science texts used for homeschooling. Now it's the religious pseudoscience, exactly. Um, then of course there's the facial, facial analysis, the new system of diagnosis. Look at somebody's face and you can figure out what's wrong with them. Um, Whew. Yeah. Um, the spiritualism, although specifically uh, calling out Christ and Jesus and stuff like that, but the idea of the spiritualism and the energies and the correlation of body part to body system to color and number and all of that feels very appropriate for the 1920s because spiritualism was really popular in the 1920s. Um, that's when, you know, like high class, high society people were um, engaging in things like seances and uh, yeah, that, that sort of 1920s um, in the US. I feel like that stuff was Victorian era in Britain, but which wouldn't, I, I, 
I don't know my time periods very well as far as that, but um, it definitely was popular here in the US in the 20s. Uh, reduce and rejuvenate. I do want to just look at this to see what this pound a day thing that he, I wanna hear about this fad diet. Reduce and rejuvenate. Benjamin Gaylord Hauser, Viennese food scientist, dedicated to my American friends who really wish to reduce. Copyright 1928. Reduce and rejuvenate. In the past, man's chief ambition was to create and accumulate things material. As a result, some have accumulated vast fortunes. Others possess fine motors, precious jewels, and many other modes of luxury. But now, the whole world over, there is a new awakening. People of all countries are being swept into the spirit of the new day and new age, in which all things are possible. Thanks to this rejuvenating spirit, thinking men and women are beginning to realize that many seeming necessities are really unessential externals of little value when compared to the vital things of life. Weren't there a whole bunch of Poirot stories about seances and mysticism? I feel like I remember watching a bunch of those BBC Poirot shows growing up. Absolutely, yes. I don't know what era the Poirot things were set in though. It's the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Puddle Club, yes. Uh, the first law of creation is self-preservation. When we are not our best physically and mentally, we suffer and we cannot be of service to anyone else. That is why thinking men and women everywhere are taking better care of themselves. The human body is literally the temple in which we live and move and have our being. And only by keeping it clean and radiant may we enjoy the supremest good in life. Wow, this feels very, um, uh, um, it's just really bringing to mind, uh, for me, um, the Salvation Army in, uh, the musical Guys and Dolls. But just, you know, that sort of, like, Salvation Army in the 1920s, this would make total sense them as well as the YMCA and the YWCA um, would have been heavily involved in this kind of uh, this kind of health pseudoscience that's tied to religion. Those organizations at that time would have been heavily involved in this kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> All the fine motor cars, jewels, and other luxuries in this world cannot equal the value of a fine, strong, beautiful body. The object of this course is to show you, step by step, in the safest and most natural manner, how you may cleanse your body and thereby reduce and sim symmetrize to its, its symmetrize it to its natural firm contour. I have never seen that formation on the word symmetry or symmetrical. Symmetrize. It's correct, I've just never seen it before. I don't know if that's, whatever. Um, there is an old saying, the smaller your waistline, the longer your lifeline. This, we must agree, has been proved in thousands of cases. About 95% of all excess baggage is usually around the abdomen. Fortunately, however, this unnatural, ungainly condition can be very easily corrected if you will follow this outline. Fat is unhealthy tissue. Every case of excess fat can be put into one of the following groups. The first group, the carbon type. 
I'm glad we reviewed the 11 types, has a constant yearning for starchy foods that cause increase in weight for the primary and by far the most prevalent cause of large, ungainly bodies is the consumption of too many dead, denatured foods. The chief among them are the starches and sweets. People of carbon type are really undernourished and hungry for the more nourishing foods, but their abnormal craving for starchy foods makes them fatter and fatter, and what is equally undesirable makes their flesh become soft and flabby. It is fortunate that this kind of overweight and flabbiness can be corrected in a few months' time. The second group is not nearly as prevalent as the first. The overweight of people of this second type is due to sluggishness, lack of air and exercise, and of course, again, lack of living foods. When we do not oxidize, our circulation becomes poor. This causes sluggishness, and in time, much weight is put on, which in reality is retained body waste. This second group needs thorough body cleansing, plus a normal amount of exercise out of doors. The third group of fat people is an interesting type. This watery type often goes into immense proportions. The bodies of those in this group are large, soft, and watery. Frequently, there is swelling of the wrists and ankles. These hydrogen people are not necessarily large eaters, but they consume great quantities of liquids. The more they drink, the fatter and heavier they become. If these people will simply add a little salt or lemon to the water they drink, they will at once reduce, or better still, they should try to get all liquids from fruits and vegetables. Then there is one more type of obesity we might mention. Oh, people of this type are by far in the minority. Those having a, a lack of glandular secretions. They too will derive great benefit by following this system since the glands are also nourished and stimulated by the blood. A clean bloodstream will naturally increase glandular activity. Oh boy, the pseudoscience is strong with this one. <laughs> body chemistry. A natural, healthy body is made up of 16 chemicals. Wait, I thought there were 11. Um, I don't even know where to start. A natural, healthy body is made up of 16 chemicals, which are found in the following proportions. 3 pounds hydrogen, 4 pounds calcium, 6 ounces magnesium, 5 ounces fluorine. 1 ounce silicon, 3 pounds phosphorus, 75 pounds oxygen, 4 ounces of sodium, 5 ounces of sulfur, 2 ounces of iron, uh, traces of iodine and manganese, 2 pounds of chlorine, 50 pounds of carbon, 2 pounds of nitrogen, and 3 ounces of potassium. We know. We took apart a human body at the elemental level so that we could find out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Where did they come up with these numbers? Every one of these chemicals has been given to us for a specific purpose. <laughs> I know it's really nice for those proportions to be such round numbers. <laughs> 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 Calorimeters for the win, I guess. <laughs> Every one of these chemicals has been given to us for a specific purpose, and when we eat the foods that contain them, we can either build or reduce the body. Let us always remember that the physical body is what we feed it, and that we can either gain or lose when we understand these few natural principles. I think he just said you are what you eat. Best reducing chemicals. Iron, chlorine, fluorine, silicon, sulfur, sodium, magnesium, and oxygen. 
When eating foods that contain the above chemicals, you are using the best known elements for reducing and slenderizing. The specific function of these chemicals is to cleanse the body of all avoir de poids. Uh, avoir de poids is not a word in my regular vocabulary. I'm going to look it up. Avoir de poids, a system of weights based on a pound of 16 ounces or 7,000 grains widely used in English-speaking countries. <laughs> I'm doing... <laughs> It's been so fun. I couldn't stop. Um, we did look at the um, facial gymnastics. Uh, right now we're looking at... Um, right now we're looking at reduce and rejuvenate the new way. The pound-a-day reducing system. And... Um, oh, boy. Yeah, apparently, avoir de poids. Avoir de poids is 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 english <laughs> i could have sworn it was french um how many agatha christie mysteries did he read about dissolving murder victims in victims and lie <laughs> did he, to get the elemental composition of the human body i don't know puddle glove um the best chlorine reducing foods are red cabbage white cabbage sauerkraut spinach cottage cheese salt roquefort cheese swiss cheese salt fish and dried beef the best sodium reducing foods, celery, carrots, okra, spinach, asparagus, strawberries, apples, gooseberries, almonds, lentils, pistachios, and young beets. I'm trying to go fast because we're way over time. But um, best sulfur reducing foods, cabbage and uh, red and white, carrots, spinach, onions, almonds, egg yolk, shrimp, and radishes. The best iron reducing foods, blackberries, strawberries, beef, egg yolk, lentils, head lettuce, asparagus, spinach. Because listing foods, is the least entertaining part of this. The best silicon reducing foods, asparagus, sauerkraut, strawberries, cucumbers, lettuce. The best magnesium reducing foods, oranges, sour plums, grapefruit, spinach, rye crisp, green peas, egg yolk, almonds, and walnuts. The best fluorine reducing foods, sea lettuce. Would that be seaweed? Uh, red cabbage, white cabbage, cauliflower, cottage cheese, shrimps, and watercress. Best oxygen reducing foods, limes, lemons, greens, tomatoes, radishes, garlic, onions. All of the above foods have a specific action in the body and when eaten in right combination will bring splendid results. Beef is not an iron reducing food. What in the homeopathic like tourist like nonsense is this? <laughs> Problem. He's a food scientist from the 1920s. How could he be wrong? <laughs> My phone has been disagreeable, but I just went, want to say it sounded more like he wanted to try making a person in a pot. <laughs> Pretty witchery. Hi. Oh, this is this is what we... I, I couldn't end the stream until we looked at this. And yes, this stream is not for actual medical advice. Please do not take it as such. If you are having physical or mental issues, please seek professional help as soon as possible. Scientist is a loose term. <laughs> the pound a day reducing method. Sorry. This combined with Puddle Glum's comment about the opposite of dissolving people in lie made me think of um the movie um perfume which um Yeah, Perfume, the story of a murderer. I will say, somewhat disturbing, but it is a good movie. But just the idea of reducing somebody a pound a day or dissolving them in lye made me think of that movie. Um, <clears throat> you can eat all, all of type food you want, is every diet ever. Exactly. Uh, we already had a seven-day cleanse diet from this same person, um, published in 1925. Um, 
and we had to look and uh, scientists already had reason to suspect that purge diets of that type were ineffective and possibly harmful as early as 1830. So a hundred years later, he was publishing a seven day purge diet. <clears throat> So now, the pound-a-day reducing method. This is the quickest method for getting rid of fat and body wastes. It is by no means a fast. Quite the contrary. You can eat all you want of these reducing and cleansing foods. By following this outline, you will be amazed to see how much waste will be eliminated through your bowels, kidneys, and skin. You are using nature's mightiest food chemicals, which will not only reduce, but at the same time, cleanse and rejuvenate your entire body. I wonder how much of this is going to be fiber. Um, <clears throat> you must be sure to do exactly as directed in the following pound a day reducing outline. Eat only the foods mentioned and do not drink any water as it will prevent you from losing. Another important feature of our entire system is the fact that you do not become old and haggard looking. Many men and women who have reduced through unnatural methods have numerous lines and wrinkles. This is especially noticeable around the neck and is known as turkey neck. The scientific combination and the large amount of highest life-giving foods do not merely remove the excess fat but actually cause the flesh to become firm. <laughs> Lots. So much fiber. <laughs> I can think of a way to get rid of at least 100 pounds in less than three minutes. I's the probably dead scientist. <laughs> he is, in fact, dead. Uh, died in the 80s. Um, the 1980s. I just... Do not drink water or you will not lose any weight. <clears throat> you will look many years <laughs> for your five o'clock tra traffic home. Oh, Sterling, enjoy your drive. I'm sad that you have class right now because I don't know. When there's a break or something, you need to come co host or just host. Either one. Um, you will look many years younger after you have followed this new and natural regime. The pound a day re reducing fruits. Oh, wow. This is the destroy your stomach lining diet. Yes, drive safe. Very best. Lemons, limes, grapefruit, pineapple. In fact, Puddle Glum, you are correct. This is the destroy your stomach lining and the lining of your mouth diet. Um... Second best, oranges, apples, pears, cherries, peaches. Third best, strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, and cranberries. But remember, do not drink any water. All fruits should be eaten without sugar, as sugar neutralizes some of the reducing qualities of the fruits. You may use a bit of honey in your lemonade. How do you make lemonade without water? You're not supposed to drink any water. How do you make lemonade without water? Also going to destroy your tooth enamel. No, I'm really, I, seriously, how do you make lemonade without water? Is it lemonade if there's no sugar or water? Because it specifically said you aren't going to lose any weight if you drink water. Do not drink any water at all. But then it mentions lemonade. Lemonade is literally lemon juice, water, and sugar. Pound a day reducing vegetables. Very best. Raw red cabbage, raw white cabbage, raw carrots, raw onions, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, green peppers, raw celery, radishes, raw dandelions. I wonder if... I wonder if Brussels sprouts would be on that list 
today. Because today's Brussels sprouts are have a higher sugar content than the Brussels sprouts from 1928. Um, lemonade's 95% water and sugar, too. Yeah, that's true. Second best. Uh, spinach cooked for 8 minutes. Beet tops cooked for 10 minutes. Mustard greens cooked for 15 minutes. Cucumbers and tomatoes. Third best. Cooked carrots, cooked celery, asparagus, young beets, green peas, okra, and young beans. Sorry. That's the second time I've said the vegetable starting with O, and it even just thinking about it kind of turns my stomach. So, sorry. That one just really, really... Wow. Even just saying the word the second time was difficult for me. Um, anyway, raw salads. I did not know that I reacted to that word that way. <laughs> uh, raw salads are the best for reducing purposes. Eat all you want. Use only salt and lemon for dressing. Or if you wish, you may use the pound a day reducing dressing. See the recipe. Never use vinegar. It is harmful. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, what? You want me to eat all of these raw acidic fruits and vinegar is harmful? <clears throat> and boy, uh, the apple cider vinegar diets of today would have something to argue with them. On your cooked vegetables, you should... <laughs> Where does he think vinegar comes from? <laughs> On your cooked vegetables, you should use vegetable salt. And if you like, a little lemon. I'm sorry, can somebody look up and, and tell me, what the heck is vegetable salt? I am unfamiliar with vegetable salt, and I would, I would like to know what that means. Um, <clears throat> use little or no water for cooking vegetables. Again. Water is a no-no. And be sure to use all the liquid from your cooked vegetables, as this liquid contains very necessary reducing elements, like the water you need to live, since you're not allowed to drink any. <laughs> Heavy aluminum kettles are, in general, the best cooking utensils. Do not allow the foods to remain in the aluminum kettles overnight. Use bowls instead. Okay, vegetable salt is just seasoned salt. I kind of thought that might be the case, but I hadn't seen that terminology before. I can't do diets. I love potatoes too much. Also, like, potatoes aren't bad for you. You just need to not, like, eat them exclusively. <laughs> not quite lorries. Pound a day reducing drinks. While following a, the pound a day reducing system, you must not drink one drop of plain water. And you should use no water at all beyond the vegetable salt water. The water drinking habit is responsible for many overweight, puffed up bodies. When we eat fruits and vegetables every day, we take living organic water into our body you will find that you do not have much desire for water drinking during this reducing regime. Regime, If you should feel unable to refrain from water, remember to charge it by adding a little lemon or lime juice or a little vegetable salt. Yeah, you don't want the dead water. You need living organic water that you get from fruits and vegetables. Because drinking water makes you fat. Which they did say in their description of types of fat people. But they said the watery type was the third type. This diet seems targeted towards the third group of fat people, the ones who retain water weight. <laughs> Why no white sugar for lemonade? White sugar bad. Let's see. <clears throat> they said a little bit of honey. Lemonade is made by using 
one lemon in a glass of water. For best results, use spring or distilled water. Remember to charge it by adding a little lemon, or sorry, I, I jumped. If you cannot take sour lemonade, then you're a weakling. Stop. Uh, sorry, if you cannot take sour lemonade, you may add a little honey or brown sugar. Do not use white sugar. Anyway, I think this diet kills your kidneys. So maybe don't. <laughs> Orange juice. Do not use more than the juice of three oranges a day. They contain more sugar and will keep up your weight. Lemonade, limeade, and grapefruit juice are much better for reducing purposes. See, this is the pseudoscience because some of what they say, later science has, has documented and borne out. In fact, yes, of these fruit drink options, orange juice is the worst. It has the most sugar. But their analysis and justification for why they're making these decisions is not correct. It's not accurate. So even when they get something right, they're basing it on hokum. Uh, yes, I know I'm running a little long. Uh, I will, I'll finish up very shortly, consilience. We're like 70% water or whatever it is. Shame on us. This guy can take my black tea from my cold, dead, and apparently waterlogged hands. <laughs> I love that. Okay, tea. Strawberry or peppermint tea served hot with lemon or a little honey or brown sugar can be used several times during the day. These teas stimulate and help to cleanse. Many Americans have learned to use these sweet teas in place of harmful teas and coffees. Apparently coffee's not allowed. Uh, the broth. This broth is a very delicious, is very delicious and nourishing. You can drink four or five cups a day. It is by far the best soup and is called living soup because it contains so many life-giving chemicals as potassium, which is very necessary in flushing body poisons. Cut up very fine one bunch of celery. Cut up very fine three carrots. Cut up very fine three tomatoes. Cut up very fine a bit of parsley. Add two quarts of water and cook slowly for not more than 30 minutes. If you cook it for 30 minutes and two seconds, you're gonna get fat. Strain and drink this pure liquid. Do not add anything to this broth with the exception of a little vegetable salt. When you reheat this broth, do it slowly. You don't wanna bruise it. It can also be taken cold with good results. Should you tire of the above, above broth, you can give it different flavors every time you prepare it. One time you may add a little onion, garlic, or the vegetable that I will not say the name of because I will literally throw up on camera. Um, <laughs> never cook cabbage in this broth. Why not? Why wouldn't you cook cabbage in the broth? What's wrong with that? It sh cabbage should be used only raw. Apparently, they don't like Irish people because they don't think boiled cabbage is a good thing. 1920s, the the aversion to boiled cabbage is most definitely anti-Irish. Yeah, it's 1920s, so that tracks. Uh, salads, let me, let me just see. Do they even give you... I was gonna look and see if there was any hint of dessert. But I'm sorry, there's a bath? 
During this reducing regime, you will lose pounds and pounds of waste through the bowels and kidneys. However, you must not forget that elimination also occurs through your skin. It must be kept active. The pores must be opened. This can be best accomplished by taking a daily 15, by taking daily a 15 minute Epsom salt bath. The right way to do this is to fill the tub half full of water, not too hot water. To this, add one pound of Epsom salt. Do not lie down, but sit in the tub and massage every part of your body with the palms of your hands. Do not stay in the tub for more than 15 minutes. Also, if you refer to the previous book that we looked at, don't massage those facial muscles because your face will droop. <laughs> Pound a day reducing breath. Pound a day reducing thought. <laughs> Pound a day reducing menus. Uh, breakfasts. Oh, God. In order to have the stomach clean and ready for the fruits, it is best to drink a bit of salt water several times a day. I have seen this diet before. Put a pinch of vegetable salt in as much hot water as you can drink. Do this before, before breakfast. Luncheons. Coffee and tea. Naturally, it is best to do without them. No, 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 Puddle Club. Unmodified water is bad. Plain water is bad. You have to, you have to alter the water for it to be useful in reducing. So adding salt to the water makes it acceptable. <clears throat> Coffee and tea. Naturally, it is best to do without them as they are not foods, only stimulants. However, if you must have them, they are least harmful at noon. One cup of weak coffee or tea, if you really want it, can be taken at noon. Nothing wrong with flavored water if you'll drink it more. Yeah, but salt water, mm. Diets that encourage you to drink salt water are not great because the only thing that drinking salt water does is help your body to eliminate, um, or, or to not, uh, not drink like blah, blah. it dehydrates you <clears throat> that's what i was trying to say it, it will help you to become dehydrated um okay so maybe water with some vegetable salt would be similar to gatorade like I could see that if so uh, my uh, when i processed it i've i've literally seen diets before that want you to drink salt water you take water you add salt it is now salt water and that's what they want you to drink but if it's just like adding a little bit of seasoning salt to the water in a sort of like adding electrolytes way that does track for me, consilience. I could see how that would make more sense. Uh, there had still not been any mention of dessert. Salads, dinners. Ooh, there's prune whip. Sliced peaches. You get dessert. Fresh fruit sherbet, fresh berries, prune whip. Ooh, on Sunday for your special occasion, you get to have 
sherbet and one macaroon. <laughs> Kidneys hate this. Black market organ sellers love this. <laughs> oh, I love this statement. The above are sample dinners. You will enjoy them. I read that as, hmm, you will enjoy them. Oh, sorry. I have to make sure that my um, corners of my mouth don't droop. You will enjoy them. Can't have those drooping, drooping mouth corners. They'll give you a turkey neck eventually. Muscle toning, some basic exercise stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> these are just fascinating because um, they're from the 1920s. Reading through them, it's clear, like it's obvious. You look at them and it's like, this is pseudoscience. Especially when you start with his um, chemic analysis thing, where he delineates the 11 types of people and associates people to um, chemicals based on facial shape and then uses that as the basis for a nutritional system. But the most fascinating thing about them, I think, is that despite the fact that these take this entirely made up association of chemical elements to facial shape and use that to define a so-called nutritional system, the bad diet that he published and had celebrity sponsors for sound like they could be on the market today. And in fact, some of them are. So, that's kind of horrifying, if you think about it. Like, very clearly pseudoscience. Like, starting from a completely made-up point, ending with a result that is something that you see advertised on the internet <clears throat> seven times a day, unless you've got an ad blocker on, then you only see it three times. You will enjoy them because there's kids starving somewhere that we colonized and stole their resources. Huddled one, that's too real. Uh, okay, I do need to go because I've gone well over time. But I was having so much fun. It is really, really a very interesting collection. Um, I, I don't think we've done a blog post about it and I think I'm gonna have to do a blog post on this collection. Um, uh, Next time on Archival Adventures, uh, which is next Wednesday, same bat time, same bat channel, um, as in either of the channels I currently broadcast this program to um, at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. Next Wednesday, uh, we are going for our second dip into, um, <clears throat> into Sam Moskowitz's list of the classics of science fiction uh, a la 1940 calling things from 1931 classic. More dystopia? Probably a bit rebellious. Uh, I do not know this story, uh, but the story that we will be looking at is Colossus by Donald Wandre. So the same author who did Farewell to Earth, which we looked at at the end of last month. Um, but this time the story is Colossus. Uh, and then coming up in October, I have uh, one that I just 
basically know nothing about at the moment. I pulled the box off the shelf and that's all I know, because I haven't even written a description of the episode yet. It's um, Union Electricitas, uh, Union Electricitas Gesellschaft Company. Um, wish me luck on um, if there's more German pronunciation that needs to happen that week. Uh, and then uh, that's followed up by the West Virginia Hillbilly, which is a newspaper. Uh, in, I feel like it needs to be specified. That's a newspaper. Uh, and then the Mead and Baker Apothecary Ledger. And then the Superior Anthracite Mines Fireboss Reports. And then later in the year, I've got some stuff from the Evaporated Milk Association and from Nabisco and... Eventually, at the end of the semester, we'll have early American cookbooks with Archivist Kira. So, fun things to look forward to. Um, we're going to be raiding, and um, I don't know who else live right now, but Stephen was here earlier and said hi and was very nice, and so I'm going to take us all over to see Stephen. Stephen Joyce, a wonderful streamer with a wonderful community. Um, probably doing some kind of game right now. <laughs> uh, playing Valley Peaks, it looks like. I do not know the game. I'm sure it will be wonderful. Ooh, it looks like it's cell shading. Um... I can type. All right, so we'll be popping on over there. I hope that this was interesting, entertaining, um, educational. I had a good time. Uh, thank you for hanging out with me. Um, and hopefully I will see all of you again soon. Until I do. Keep exploring history, everybody.